Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first one is an entitled people story. I had just finished my tour of duty overseas and was excited to get back home. As a soldier, being away from your loved ones for so long really takes a toll. The one thing that kept me going was thoughts of coming back home to my beautiful 1968 Ford Mustang GT that I had restored by hand. That car meant everything to me. It was my baby. I had spent years hunting down original parts and painstakingly restoring every inch of it. The Glossienberg green paint, the flawless chrome, the purring 289 V8, everything was perfect. I had easily sunk over $180,000 into that car over the years. It was my pride and joy. As soon as I got back stateside, I went straight home, excited to take my pony car out for a long overdue spin. But as I pulled up to the house, something seemed off. My classic Mustang was nowhere in sight. I feared maybe it had been stolen and my heart sank. When I got inside, there was a letter waiting for me. It was from my homeowner association, stating that they had repossessed and sold my Mustang due to unpaid homeowner association fees. I was shocked and outraged. I had set up an automatic payment before deploying to ensure my homeowner association dues were covered. This had to be a mistake. I immediately called the homeowner association office to sort this out. The woman I spoke to nonchalantly informed me that my automatic payments had failed somehow so they took action to recoup the debt. They had the audacity to tow away and sell my priceless Mustang at auction without even contacting me. I was fuming. That car was practically irreplaceable to me. I had owned it since high school and restored it with my own two hands. The homeowner association had no right to sell my property, especially without even notifying me. I demanded information about who purchased my car and was simply told an enthusiast in New York. $180,000 for my blood, sweat, and tears gone in an instant. The homeowner association manager refused to provide any other details about the buyer or assist in recovering my car. This injustice would not stand. Nobody messes with a soldier and gets away with it. I immediately got JAG involved to explore my legal options. They filed motions and contacted the Homeowner Association's legal team, putting major pressure on them. After some intense legal wrangling, the Homeowner Association reluctantly set up a call with the buyer in New York, hoping to calm me down. The entitled trust fund baby on the other end didn't care about my service and sacrifice. He felt he had fairly purchased the car and was not interested in selling it back. That did nothing to dissuade me. I was ready to take every legal means necessary to get back what was rightfully mine. JAG advised taking the homeowner association to court over the illegal sale. We put together an ironclad case highlighting how they circumvented due process and consumer protections for deployed service members. In court, the homeowner association tried to defend their actions, saying it was standard procedure in cases of delinquency. They tried to paint me as neglectful of my obligations but the judge saw right through it. He came down hard on the homeowner association for their reckless mistreatment of a deployed soldier. The judge deemed the sale invalid and ordered the homeowner association to pay me the full value of the car, $180,000 plus legal fees. He also demanded they immediately provide the buyer's info to facilitate return of the Mustang. Justice was sweet. Even with the court orders, the smug New Yorker refused to give up the car willingly, so I flew out there myself and rolled up with police in tow. The look of dread on his face when I knocked on the door to take back my Mustang was priceless. He knew he was powerless against a soldier on a mission. Getting behind the wheel of that Mustang again was the best feeling in the world. Driving cross-country back home with my baby was the perfect homecoming. As we cruised along the open road, something became clear to me. That homeowner association needed a lesson in respecting veterans. I devoted my energy over the next year to completely dismantling that corrupt homeowner association from the inside. I rallied neighbors and got voted onto the board. Then I spearheaded reforms and replaced key personnel who wronged me. My military-grade leadership whipped that homeowner association into shape. They'll never mistreat a service member again. When all was said and done, Justice had been served. The saying is true. Don't mess with a soldier. Through determination and the full force of the law, I fought for my rights and emerged victorious. Those homeowner association cronies underestimated this soldier's resolve, but they certainly won't make that mistake again. This soldier taught them a lesson they won't soon forget. The next one is a pro-revenge story. 
First, I would like to start out by saying that I am not trying to defend my brother in any way. I'm mad at him too, and that's why I am posting here. My 27M brother, 28M, has been married to a wonderful woman, 28F, for six years now. A couple of months ago, a courier delivered an envelope to my house. I was at work, but my wife, 22F, was home, and she called me after she opened it. Inside the envelope was a wedding photo of my brother and his wife. There were also two dozen other photos of my brother, and another, different woman in compromising positions, like the two of them walking hand in hand outside an apartment, them in robes on the apartment balcony, them together in a restaurant arm in arm, etc. The other woman was circled in all the photos, and there was things written on the pictures like, not his wife, and she knows he is married. Besides the photos, there was a photo of an email, where my brother is telling someone how hot and sexy she is, and how his wife is clueless. My brother had been having an affair, and his wife found out somehow. He thinks he left the email open on their laptop accidentally, and she saw it, but he isn't sure. His wife sent an envelope like the one I got to my parents, 53F slash 58M, and our other brother, 26M, and several of our family members. She also sent them to the other woman's parents and family, to a few dozen of their co-workers. My brother met her at work. The president of the company, several of their friends, as well as people from my brother's church, which myself, my wife, my parents, and other members of our family attend also. The other woman and my brother got their envelopes at work at the same time as their co-workers, and my brother was served with divorce papers as well. When he went home, his wife and her stuff was gone, and he hasn't seen or spoken to her since he left for work that day, because she changed her phone number and email address, and he doesn't know where she is staying. Her work is not somewhere you can just walk into, either. They only communicate through their lawyers. None of us have seen or spoken to her, either. Now, as if this wasn't enough, the other woman is pregnant, and she has moved into the condo my brother had lived in with his wife. My brother had been paying for her apartment before she moved in with him, my brother will always be my brother, but right now I'm so mad at him and embarrassed for our family. His wife was a good person, and he had no reason to cheat. If he wanted out, he could have left her first instead of running around. I don't agree with how his wife publicly outed him, though. I understand she was upset, but this caused so much embarrassment. However, I have no control over that. As I said, I am mad at my brother, and my parents are embarrassed beyond belief. Most of my family is mad at my brother, but some of them are madder than others, and there is disagreement as to how mad people should be and how wrong he is. It's not easy for me to stay out of the disagreeing and fighting because it involves everyone around me. Am I right to be mad at my brother? How can I help my parents get over their anger and embarrassment or at least make them feel better? How should I deal with all the family drama? Like I said, I love my brother, but I'm angry at him and don't know how to help my family. The next one is a petty revenge story. I had parked at the far end of a one-way parking aisle the other day, because it was the only parking available. Pulling out and exiting the lot required driving the entire length of the parking aisle. A few cars were preparing to pull out. Not important yet, but important in a second. I get to within five parking spots of the end of the aisle, and some lady driving an SUV pulls into the aisle. The wrong way. She immediately gets over to her right, so I could attempt to pass her on my way out of the aisle. It would have been possible, yes, but there isn't a ton of room. This is where I say hell no. Remember the cars who were getting ready to pull out? Two of them are behind me now. So instead of squeezing past this woman so she could drive another 20-plus spaces in the wrong direction, I pull right up to the front of her bumper. I motion with my hands, back up. She sat there. When it became abundantly clear I'm not going to let her through, nor are the people behind me, she begrudgingly puts her tank in reverse and backs up about five car lengths in order to get out of the lot. The next one is a malicious compliance story. I live in a suburban street that is narrow and has a limited parking, so parking is restricted to residents. Each household gets one parking permit that you need to display in your car if you want to park on the street. My boyfriend doesn't live with me and doesn't have a parking permit, so he parks in a nearby parking lot. It's not a big deal since it's just one two minutes away by foot. A couple of weeks ago, my boyfriend is staying over for the weekend and we go grocery shopping. On our return, he decides to stop in front of my house so we wouldn't have to carry our bags from the parking lot. The car was parked there for five minutes, max while unloading the groceries, and there were plenty of empty spots at that time of day. 
As my boyfriend is getting back in the car, my old next-door neighbor walks up to him and tells him in a very accusatory tone that non-residents can't park there. We try to explain that we were only dropping off our groceries and will be moving the car now, but old neighbor is being very rude to us and accusing of blocking the traffic and stealing spots from the residents and other nonsense. He ends up threatening to call the cops if we dare park in the street again without a permit. This neighbor has a reputation for being a royal pain, and it's not the first time he's complained to me about trivial things. Here's where the malicious compliance comes in. I don't have a car, therefore I have a parking permit that's been sitting unused ever since I moved in. I asked a friend whose husband is a cop and found out that any car can use my parking permit. It doesn't have to be registered under my name. Basically, if you have a house on this street, you're allowed to park one car on this street. I did what any petty human would do and gave my permit to my boyfriend. He now parks in front of my house any time he comes over, and old man neighbor is livid about it but can't do anything because the car has a permit. The next one is an entitled people story. My younger sister has always had issues with entitlement, taking advantage of others, throwing fits, slash being verbally abusive, and being a miser. Not trying to dispense armchair diagnoses, but she really does check every box of NPD. A few years ago, she announced her engagement to a nice guy who is a pushover. He expressed not wanting to get married for a while, but she proposed to him, not that there is anything wrong with that, and kept pressuring him to get married. He comes from a wealthier family than us and is good with money and investments. Perfect combo for her to take advantage of and have someone bankroll her delusions. He wanted a modest, local wedding so friends and family could attend. My sister decided she wanted a destination wedding outside the country. At the time, my husband and I didn't have the best-paying jobs. He was working on a second degree and we had eminent goals of buying our first home together. We regretfully declined her invitation because the trip would cost us 3 4 k dollars, which we did not have. It would have to go on a credit card. When we RSVP'd no, she said she and her now husband wanted to pay for everything so we could attend. My husband and I were floored because one, that is a lot of money, and two, my sister has never been one to offer to pay for anything LLL. We accepted her offer with a lot of gratitude. A couple months go by and she asks if my husband and I have booked our airplane tickets and hotels yet and said, they just keep getting more expensive the closer they get to the date you know. Um, what? I have never expected anyone to just give me anything, but my financial situation hasn't changed. We tell her as much and she says, well, husband, and I looked at all the prices a while ago and it is too much money so you guys will have to take care of it yourselves. We ignored her and went on with our goals. Months go by, and husband and I both get better jobs and buy our house. Sister comes back and asks again if we purchased our tickets despite repeatedly telling her no. We tell her again no, and at this point with our new jobs we aren't allowed to take time off yet and don't have enough PTO anyway. When I started my job, they offered to honor upcoming events if I needed time off. But I had said I didn't need anything since I already planned on not going to the wedding. We didn't have savings and took on a mortgage so we can't tack on credit card debt too. I was so annoyed with her constant, just figure it out, tantrums and if you really loved me, speeches. I tried to frame it differently so maybe she could understand. I told her that attending her wedding would mean that we would have to no-show at work, likely lose our jobs, not be able to pay our mortgage, and then lose our house. I said to her, so you are okay with my husband and I losing our jobs and house and risking homeless so we could attend your wedding? Of course she didn't have a good answer for that lol. She has no concept of money because she has always manipulated people into paying for her. She has never been able to hold a job. She has no empathy for others yet thinks she is deserving of special treatment. I don't understand where it came from because our parents raised us to be hard working and to not expect crap from anyone. Our parents and my husband and I couldn't afford to attend. Her husband's family could and wanted to go, but she wouldn't allow it because it would be weird to only have his family there and not mine. She put up a huge paywall and then blamed us for having to elope and went NC with us. It has honestly been a huge relief after a lifetime of her abuse. The next one is an entitled parent story. Story. This is a true story. It's about my father. I might sound like a bad person talking about my own parents this way, but it's true. I'm no angel, and I had a rough life. P.S. If you see me talk about money, it's an INR, 
one USD tilde AD INR. To be honest, I had a rough childhood. The relationship between me and my father was really bad. I'm the second child and I have an older sister. Apparently my dad wanted another daughter. Hence, he started avoiding me from the day I was born. Like he didn't even show up at the hospital that day. So my mom had to go to the hospital alone, give birth to a baby and come back home with this new baby, me. He avoided me so much that whenever my family would go shopping, everyone would get something with them. A cloth, toffee, or anything they wanted. I, on the other hand, would not have anything. If I asked for something, he would slap me in the middle of the road inside the shop and throw a loud tantrum, like I asked him to do something illegal. Let me come clean here. After a few years, after I turned eight or nine, I did start arguing back. I started to push him to the extremes to make him feel what I felt like. But he would handle it all the same way, yell at me, slap me. Even until this day, I have social anxiety disorder because of the experiences I had. Not only that, he loved throwing away my stuff. When I was young, I had a hobby of collecting stuff. My oldest memory is of me collecting shells from the beach. He would throw everything away, saying that it was worthless. I started collecting stamps, and he used all of them to send letters to his friends. I collected coins, and he threw them all in the toilet. I collected fossils. Not lying. I had fossils. He waited until I filled a full bucket of amber and other kinds of fossils and sent a verification to the archaeological department to verify it. They verified it and said they are original and could get me thousands if I sell them. I didn't want to sell and wanted to collect more. Days later, he took all of it and threw it away because, and I quote, carrying bones inside the house would bring demons inside. I gave up fighting him at that point. I was around 13, 15 at the time. I thought that if I could bear a few more years, I could get my own life, with my own rules. When the time came for me to go to college, he wouldn't let me choose my favorite course. I was forced to choose IT, not regretting that, but it wasn't my thing. I just agreed and lived in the hostel. He went abroad for work after that. I thought I could live my life after that. But he doesn't let go of me that easily. He gave his number to like everyone in my college. My roommates, classmates, professors, etc. And he'd investigate me every day. If I don't respond the way he liked, he'd send my sister, fam, favorite, to get my mobile phone and make me realize what it's like to be lonely. After four hard years and one year of training, I got a nice job in an MNC that I've always looked up to. In Jan this year, I got my first salary. I wanted to have a lot of fun with it, like having good food in a nice restaurant with my friends, going out on a hiking trip, etc. That's when he shows up again, after all these years, giving me everything I wanted. He'd have my food on the plate before I get to the table, the water heater would be on hours before I go to the bathroom for a bath, and stuff like that. My mother, being the kind-hearted angel she is, warns me that he's doing it to get my money and nothing else. And just like she said, a few days later my dad comes to me and demands that I send him 3,000 rupees. Like I said before, I was still a trainee. My salary was hardly above 5k, so I straight up refused to pay him that much. He was working abroad so I was sure he already had millions in his account and just didn't want to spend his own money. Then the blackmailing starts. My grandma, sister, uncles, and everyone in my fam insisted on me paying my dad because family comes first. So, after a lot of arguments, I decided to take the hard way around. I pay him the 3k, pack my stuff, and move out. I remove my dad's name from the nominee and insurance list that my company provides, free health care in all major hospitals throughout the world for the employees and three family members which just has my mother's name now. Now I live alone, just a few minutes away from the main HQ of my company. The story doesn't end there. He called me a few days ago asking me for another 10K. This time he says no matter how much I get in my salary, I should send him 10K every month. If you're living with your expenses, you know that's impossible. To put that into contrast, I make around 25K a month. The room I live in costs 14, 5K slash month in rent, also, there are internet costs, food, tax, and other essentials I should take care of. So, I just decide to ignore him for a few days. I've made up my mind. I'm not paying him a penny after this. Even if it means that the money would save his life, I'll let him die. If the money is for his funeral, I'm going to let his body rot in the open. Like, I said, I'm not an angel. I've suffered in life, but that doesn't mean I'm going to help my oppressors and be a good hero. Everyone should own up and pay for what they are worth. So yes, the money is mine. 
I'm saving the rest of my money, salary, expenses, up for my future wife, marriage, and kids. Update, I've been reading all the comments here. Thanks all for showing your support and letting me know I'm not alone. Now, I just wanted to add more context. Many of you said I shouldn't be calling my mom an angel because she was standing there and watching as my dad abused me. That's not fully true. To add context, she is the reason I'm not on the streets right now. She's been working her butt off to make sure that her son gets a good future. She was alone when I was born, no family members near her to support her. She's the one who made sure I studied well and got a good job. She didn't have to. She's from a rich family and my dad is descended from royalty. She could have used his money for us and taught us, me and my sis, to do the same. Instead, she worked and taught us well as well. She's the one who helped me move out and get to where I am. Sure, she did get a share from the money I sent my dad, but she isn't as bad as you think. In my story, she is one of the very few good people. Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.